Hi everyone, welcome to Go Local Live and Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in for this Thursday afternoon news and politics and more. And I'd like to welcome a breaking news story. Well, a very interesting development here in science and technology in Rhode Island. Sadie Chen, thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. CEO and founder of Graphene Composites. Now, we have some of these graphene composites, but before we go into this strongest, latest, most resilient graphene composite material. I want to tell folks a little bit about the Sandy Chen story. Growing up in Rhode Island, graduating from Brown, a career in politics, banking, and then deciding you're going to invent this incredible material. Um, yeah, God, that sounds really impressive. But I, I mean, you know, it started um, uh, in Slatersville. Um, and then we moved to do another part of um, North Smithfield. I don't know if you know where Wright's Dairy Farm is, of but yeah. So anyway, yeah, we were, we were one of the houses next door, and um, went to um, you know Hollowell Primary and North Smithfield Junior Senior High School, and then ended up at Brown, um, and um, and then how I got this accent, <laughs> which was not which I didn't have at the time, was um, I then ended up um, going to uh, um, Europe, where I spent well a good. Well, 10, 20, 30 years now, so that's it. Again, yeah. politics and banking, and then one night I heard over a couple glasses of wine said, why can't you mix graphene with aerogel? Yes. Tell us a little bit. Yeah, okay, that so that's makes not it the, very simple. Well, no, no, that, I mean, that isn't the, yeah, so it wasn't the typical, um, um, you know, dinner conversation. And yeah, we have, we're probably on our second or third bottle of, Red um, and um, and I uh, was we, we were working with a graphene company. Graphene is the world's um, strongest substance. It's um, roughly a hundred times stronger than steel. It's also the world's most um, electrically conductive substance. It's about twenty times more conductive than copper. Okay. Um, and it's um, what we were. My wife and I were building our new. Well, actually, our, you know, the builders were building our new house, and we were looking at insulating it with something called um, aerogel, which is the world's lightest substance and best in insulator. Okay. And um, uh, again, by the second okay. bottle of wine, uh, we began to say, well, actually, if you put that, you know, the world's strongest substance together with the world's best uh, insulator, maybe it's the world's best shock absorber as well. Um, and uh, could you make up um, bulletproof armor? And so I happened to call up a friend of mine who happened to be the head of nanotechnology for the UK government, um, and as, as one does. And then <laughs> and I said, well, James, <laughs> does that... That's good to have a <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was quite lucky. And I said, well, does that make sense? And he said, yeah, actually, scientifically, it really makes, makes sense. And, um, and um, did then uh, put the phone down and did nothing about it for about two years um, uh, until another dinner party. And, and was it swirling in the back of your head, though, a little bit? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, it, it did. So it came up at another dinner party, and um, again, we got to the red wine bit, and, and my wife said, I am sick of hearing you talk about this. Will you just, you know, start the company? Just do it. And, and that's what we did about four years ago. Okay, so very good. And I want to talk a little bit because there's so many uses for it, but yeah. specifically what you brought in here, mm. you talk about was really that bulletproof, that sort of having that strongest material, yes. really the impetus behind the whole company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had three ideas when we started. One was to make armor, bulletproof armor. The, um, the second was to make um, aircraft, light, lighter. If you take the world's lightest substance, you know, the world's strongest substance put together, you could, yeah, and we thought, well, you could probably make really light um, aircraft. And then, um, uh, and we were also interested in uh, renewable energy. And, uh, but this is our first product that we've come out with. Um, uh, I mean, do, do you want me to do I, the... I, I, I love the explanation because there's, there's a term for it in terms of yeah. how a strong material becomes stronger. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, uh, well, th I mean, this is, what's, this is our secret sauce. It's, it's what's inside this shield. It's, um, graphene is the dark side, um, and then the light side is what's called aerogel. And, uh, I mean, you can feel it. It's flimsy. You could break it apart with your fingers. It's really... It's like paper, um, but it does something called um, hypersonic shear thickening, um, which um, when I first mentioned it to my wife, she said, all those words are English, <laughs> but, um, you know, what does that mean? Okay. And, and what shear thickening is a property that a, a few substances have, which is that the harder you hit it, the harder it gets. Um, and ours is the only substance that we know of that um, has hypersonic shear thickening, which is that when you hit it with a, a bullet, 
going three times the speed of sound. So this actual particular sheet of graphene aerogel was hit with a uh, sniper round um, that could take your head off at a mile. Um, and uh, what it left is a slight dent um, That's in it. the... Uh, yeah, and actually the bullet, what it, what it does is, because it gets so hard, it re actually reflects the energy of the bullet back towards the bullet, um, and it disintegrates the bullet if it's going ho fast enough. Okay. And um, I know it might be tough for viewers to see here, but I mean, yeah. here's, you were, somebody was at the gun range. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we tested this at the Rhode Island State Police Range, and um, so that is um, a, uh, what's left over from a 357 Magnum round. That's a nine millimeter submachine gun round, and that's what was, uh, well, there was a 44 mag, um, Magnum round um, sat on top of there before it kind of just fell off the face of the shield. So what was the reaction from law enforcement when you were testing this at the yeah. gun range to, to see this type of reaction? There's, there's been a lot of interest. Um, and, um, and yeah, it, it, there's, there's been a lot of interest. Um, I mean, one of the things that we're looking at is, is, um, is applying this towards schools uh, as well to protect against active shooters. And there is a lot of interest in that as well. So speaking of a lot of interest, obviously started graphene composites in the UK, but yes. 19 have a USA outpost here in Rhode Island yeah. to really bring it to the country. Yeah. And you've been all around in the recent weeks and months. I mean, I just want to talk a little bit about today. At the Entanglement Institute in Newport, <laughs> the potential for graphene and quantum computing. Yes, yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, to be honest, I'm about halfway through my online MIT course on quantum physics, so I, I'm, I'm not, I don't completely understand how it well, works. Well, if you figured but, this out so but, far, <laughs> I, have, I have faith you can figure out the quantum computing aspect. But, what would that look like? Um, it's what, what we're working towards is um, one, of the, one of the things about graphene is it's very, very, very small. Um, it's one roughly one third of a billionth of a meter wide. So you'd have to stack about um, a million of these things for you to even be together, to be able to even see it, Wow. if that makes sense. Okay, yeah? so that's, um, that's small. <laughs> but one of, the, one of the things about what the quantum mechanics is all about is the, is the physics of the very small. And one of those things about physics is the smaller you get it and you get, can get the bonds right, the stronger it is. And, the, and this is about as strong as you can get. And you also were at the International Yacht Restoration School, yes. so you talked about the aeronautic industry as being a potential uh, application for the material, but of course, it also works on boats. materials. Yes. Yeah. Um, so talk yeah. with us a little bit more. Now here in Rhode Island, you were at Northeast Knitting Complex in Pawtucket. Yes. So yeah. is that where shop is literally being set up? Uh, yes, that's one of our key partners here in Rhode Island, and uh, the DeRosa family has built that into a really good core of manufacturing expertise um, in Rhode Island, and it's, it, it's, they've been wonderful uh, for us, uh, just partnering and, and really cooperating with us in the manufacturing process, and so, yes, we'll, uh, they'll be one of our key partners. Uh, and you need a key piece of equipment as well. <laughs> yes. All right. So if there's, if there's anyone out there with a 1,000 ton heated press that might have been used to make a Navy warship back in, for the war or something like that, and it's kind of lying around your shipyard or factory, um, we'd love to buy it. <laughs> okay. So you've got the location in Pawtucket. You're working with partners. Could use a really key piece of equipment. Yes. But what next for graphene composites, especially in the US? You talk about the potential for applications. You're really introducing folks to this amazing new technology. It's February 2020. I mean, what does the year have in store? Well, uh, we're, uh, I, I know it sounds, we're, we're all going to grow beyond armor. You know, this, this is our first product, but um, uh, what would you do if you had a, a material that was half the weight of carbon fiber? You could make an pl airplane lighter, you could make a car lighter, you could make pretty much anything that you, you know, drive or swim or whatever around in lighter. And then could that save fuel? Yes. Could that be, you know, um, go faster? Yes. Um, and, um, and then in the area of um, renewable energy, we're looking at applying our technologies to uh, wind turbines. Um, to make them last longer um, and be more efficient. 
Okay, so again, I know it's the beginning of 2020. We'll, we'll be seeing, I'm, I'm assuming, a lot more of graphene composites Hopefully, in, in yeah. the near future. Yeah, yeah. And of course, as you said, with some equipment lying around, and of course, investors as well. Yes, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we, we are, um, uh, I mean, one thing to point out is that we, we've got, um, we, we, we haven't been funded by a big venture capital firm. We've been funded by over 3,000 individual investors, including my father-in-law, my two sisters-in-law, and things like that. And so, you know, dinners are always a bit uncomfortable, but you know, it's, it's, it's actually, and most of my friends. How are things going? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know, it's, and, Have another bottle of wine and eventually <laughs> Exactly. Well, it is. It's, and, and actually, it's a great, it, you know, it's a great way to uh, live a life, actually, because um, if you um, just do what you want to do and then, and, and deliver, and tell the truth. I think it, it's uh, it's actually quite a satisfying way to run a business. And how much does it mean to you, you know, growing up in Rhode Island, going into Europe, you know, starting it over there, to put that foothold here back in Rhode Island and say, you know, I've come full circle, and Rhode Island can be a catalyst for yeah. a major technological advancement. I mean, it's it's it really is great. It's um. We've, you know, we've talked with Brown, we've talked with URI. My dad used to teach at URI. Um, you know, I, I, I got my degrees at Brown. And so going, you know, back up to the hill and going into the engineering center and just talking um, with, you know, some of my old professors, it's just been, it's been great. And then moving into the uh, Wexford building, the CIC mm. um, here in Providence has been a real positive move for us. It's just got a great community of tech that, brings together everything in Rhode Island um, that I, I think is going to be great for the state. Well, I'm, con I'm convinced we're going to be hearing more from Graphene Composites in the, in the very you. near future and moving forward, but I appreciate you, Sandy, coming in, telling viewers again about this groundbreaking new technology started in the UK, 2019, have a foothold here in Rhode Island, putting Rhode Island really on the map again with this an emerging technology that will be bringing, I'm sure, more of moving forward. So Sandy Chen, thank you so much for taking the time to come in. And thank you for watching us on Go Local Live. We'll be sure to bring you more news, politics, lifestyle, and sports very soon. In the meantime, have a good Thursday night, and we'll see you shortly. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.